Okay, once again, uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, we were discussing about the second unit of our syllabus, that is signal conditioning, right? Where uh, we are discussing the most important part of the signal conditioning, that is some special type of amplifiers, right? Which are mainly used for uh, biotechnology field, right? So today, first of all, uh, we want to discuss about some biopotentials, right? Biopotential means the biological signals, right? So uh, here I have written some examples. One is ECG, electrocardiography, then EMG, electromyography, and then EEG, that is electron encephalography. These systems basically or signals rather measure the heart, muscle, and brain activity respectively. Means ECG is used for the uh, measurement of heart activities, right? And these all signals are at very low level, usually at micro volt level. And the source of these signals, it means from where we are getting these sources is a way beneath of heart, muscle, and brain respectively, right? But uh, as far as the uh, analysis and treatment is concerned, we need to take care of these signals because ultimately we need to uh, get these signals and process these signals. So if we take the example of uh, ECG signal, which is the point of heart and the heart, you all know that it is under the thick layer of muscles. And also uh, we are getting this signal at the uh, skin on which electrodes are placed. So there is a five level skin and further there are bones and body fluids in between these uh, thick layer of muscles and skin. So all these uh, things are presenting the resistance to efficient signal deception, right? So apart from these uh, body structural issues like skin cover, bones, body, body fluids, etc. At the time of recording these biopotentials, which are at very low level, usually at microvolt level, there are two other obstacles that we need to take care of. And these are the noise and drift, right? Noise occurs because of the recording devices or when the patient moves, right? Or someone talks in between recording the signal, right? And the drift is a change in the baseline that is generated because of different thermal impacts. So in order to measure such biopotentials, uh, we make use of some special kind of amplifiers like instrumentation amplifiers, carrier amplifiers, chopper amplifiers, isolation amplifiers, etc. Right. And in this line, we have discussed already the instrumentation amplifier and carrier amplifiers. So today we are going to discuss about the third one that is chopper amplifiers. Right. Before uh, we discuss what is our main motto, our main aim is to have the efficient signal deception. Right. The different signal dissection and we all know that uh, for body structural issues like five layers of skin the muscles and the bones body fluid we cannot do anything for that right so we need to take care of the other issues like noise and drift chopper amplifiers is mainly used to uh, tackle these two issues that is noise and drift and it worked best to resolve these problems and it exhibits the precise output with low noise right so now uh, we'll see how this chopper amplifier will take care of uh, these two important issues that is noise and drift so this is the general block diagram of chopper amplifier here you can see that uh, the it has three main parts that is one is chopper modulator then ac amplifier and then demodulator come rectify right so the input of chopper modulator is the dc input signal which is to be measured rather right which is which is at very low level right and here the output side you can see that we have an amplified output which is nothing but the dc signal so in this uh, our main motto is to amplify 
this input signal right without having noise and drift this is our main motto so normal amplifier uh, for this purpose cannot work right there are a lot of issues that we have already discussed right so today we are mainly focus on the uh, working of the chopper amplifier so let us see how it works one by one we'll discuss the working of these three blocks right the number one is chopper modulator then ac amplifier and then demodulator and rectifier so there are three main components of the uh, chopper amplifier uh, chopper modulator ac amplifier and then third one is rectifier and demodulator so let us discuss one by one actually uh, chopping device or you may say the chopper modulator it converts the slowly varying dc input signal which is to be measured and which is uh, at very low level right it converts this low level dc input signal to a pulse dc signal pulse dc means it is basically the alternating signal right so what is the concept behind chopping it mainly chops the input signal chop means it cuts the uh, signal into small pieces right and it is mainly done to avoid the drift problem in dc amplifiers right so here you can see that uh, this is your dc signal which is to be measured which is at very low level and after passing this signal to the chopping device will be having this output where you can see that these are some pieces of the input signal and it is known as pulse dc or you may say the alternating signal right in between these two signal there is a chopping device next come to the amplifier you all know the main aim of amplifier is to raise the uh, amplitude of the uh, input signal so this is the pulse dc uh, input for this particular amplifier which we have obtained as the output of chopping device when this pulse dc signal is fed to the ac amplifier then we will be having the amplified pulse dc okay here you can see that uh, this is the amplified version of this pulse dc right and in the last section this amplified pulse dc signal is fed to the uh, rectifier and demodulator so finally in the rectifier and demodulator section this amplified ac signal or you may say pulse dc is transformed or converted into the amplified dc signal which is our desired output right so individually uh, we have seen all three components now let us see uh, in the combined form so how this uh, network works so uh, in this slide you can see that uh, the below portion is nothing but the block diagram of the chopper amplifier the dc input signal there are three blocks chopper modulator ac amplifier and demodulator section right and here we are getting the amplified a dc signal which is at uh, having high amplitude right so this is our dc input signal after passing this uh, dc signal through this chopper modulator we are getting this pulse dc right and when this pulse dc is fed to this ac amplifier we are getting the amplified pulse dc output and when this amplified pulse dc is fed to the rectifier and demodulator we are having the amplified dc signal right so basically uh, in the chopper modulator actually some kind of uh, 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 sample and holding is there right so that's why we are using the demodulator in order to extract the the uh, required information right so this is the whole working of chopper amplifier in the last uh, you can see that i have written the dc signal is first fed to the uh, block that is known as chopping device where it transformed it as a pulse dc or ac signal right then in the next block that is ac amplifier amplification of the chopped ac signal is done using the ac amplifier and finally in the rectifier and demodulator section this ac signal is transformed to amplified dc signal which is our required signal okay so students i think you all have understood so thanks for patient hearing